Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making a lovely jojoba olive silk hair conditioner. This is actually one of the very first hair conditioner recipes I ever developed, and as I was testing it, I was so thrilled with how amazing and soft and hydrated and wonderful my hair felt, and I definitely might have invited at least one coworker to touch my hair, because it felt so pretty. In the most basic sense, Liquid hair conditioner is basically just lotion. It's an emulsion of a water part and an oil part. But one of the biggest tweaks that I make when I make hair conditioner instead of lotion is I make the oil phase much smaller so that your hair doesn't look all sort of greebly after you use it. And so our oil phase is pretty teensy. We have our emulsifier, we're using BTMS 50 so that we get that cationic conditioning element. If you don't have BTMS 50, you can use a different emulsifying wax like Pull wax or emulsifying wax NF, but you will lose that cationic conditioning part of it, which is kind of a bummer. So I would probably try to replace that somewhere else by adding maybe a quat, like a polyquaternarium or a honey quat in the water phase at like two to three percent. So that's kind of one way to get around not being able to find BTMS 50, because I do hear from quite a lot of you, especially in places in the world that aren't North America, that is kind of tricksy to find. I rounded off the oil phase with some jojoba oil and olive oil, and then our water phase is spiked with lots of great humectants like vegetable glycerin and silk, as well as beautiful aloe vera. To wrap it all up, we've got a gorgeous essential oil blend, but of course you're always welcome to customize essential oil blends, especially in things like hair conditioners and lotions where they're really just there for decoration. Or you can leave it unscented if you want, totally up to you. But because this is, again, basically just a lotion, we've got, you know, we'll have our oil phase and our water phase and we'll heat them and then we'll combine them and then we'll blend them with a stick blender and that's pretty much it, right? So yeah, let's go make some hair conditioner. We'll begin by preparing our oil phase and our water phase. So this is a 500 milliliter Pyrex measuring cup and to that we're going to add three grams of BTMS 50 four grams of olive oil, and this olive oil has been infused with calendula petals, but that's just because I had a bunch left over from a recipe I did recently. <laughs> so you can just use plain olive oil if you want, or infuse with another herb, your choice. And three grams of jojoba oil. For the water phase, I already have 80 grams of distilled water measured out into this 250 milliliter Pyrex measuring cup. And to that, I'm going to add one gram of water-soluble silk peptides, 0.3 grams of 200 times concentrated aloe vera powder, and if yours is 100 times concentrated, just use twice as much, or you can use 40 grams of water and 40 grams of aloe vera juice, and in here I have 10 grams of vegetable glycerin. To heat this all up, we're going to pop it in our water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan with about an inch of water in the bottom of it, and I'm just gonna pop both of our measuring cups in here and go put this on the stovetop over medium low heat, for about half an hour to melt everything through and make sure everything dissolves. So about half an hour later, we are ready to start blending. So you can see that there's just one container now and that's because I find that BTMS 50 doesn't really like to liquefy and stay liquid. So if I carry it over here, we have issues. So I like to add the water phase to it after everything is melted on the heat and then heat it there for a little while longer before I uh, bring it back over here. But I've got my immersion blender and we'll do a couple quick bursts and work our way up to a good blend. All right, we can let this cool down a bit more, come back and blend it more later. 10 minutes later and this is a little cooler you can get a little bit of thickening kind of going on, but it's still pretty thin. Now this product will definitely be quite thin because there's a very small oil phase, uh, but it will get a little thicker than this. So let's give it a bit more blending. Definitely still needs some more time to cool down. I'm going to take it off of the dish towel now so it can cool down a bit faster and come back in about 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes later, and this is picking up some nice viscosity here. You can see it's quite creamy, like sort of extra thick, heavy, uh, unwhipped cream. And it's actually quite cool. So I think we're about ready to add our preservative and our essential oils and get this in a bottle. 
All right, so we'll start with our essential oils. We're going to do 10 drops of bergamot essential oil. And because this is washout, you don't have to worry about it being bergamotine free. Four drops of cardamom essential oil, five drops of lavender essential oil, and two drops of geranium essential oil. We're also going to add a drop of vitamin E and our preservative. So in here I have half a gram of liquid germal plus, and I'm gonna pour some of the lotion in here, get that blended in, just so we can make sure we're really picking up all the preservative and then get that back in the main container. All right, now it's time to pop this in our final container. So this is a 120 milliliter or four ounce bottle from Voyager. And so I've got a pump top and it's squeezy. You don't really need it to be squeezy if you're putting a pump top on it, but this recipe would also work really well with a flip top bottle, especially since it is quite a thin conditioner. So. You don't even need a funnel for this one. You can just pour it straight in. All right, and there you go. You just made a jojoba olive and silk lovely hair conditioner. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe with amounts in both metric and imperial and a link to this recipe on my blog where you'll find links to all of the ingredients and the equipment I used as well as some packaging. See you next time.